it's so it's so much harder to actually fight against sin. I'm just gonna sin. But no, God didn't create us like that. There are many people that want to be living in sin, and then when the bad things happen, they expect God to save them. God is like, no. When I wanted to save you from your sin, you wanted to stay in your sin. I can't save you in your sin. Guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome back. This is the Open Door TV. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button as we begin. Today's topic, we're going to talk about sin. So, um, somebody commented on my on my on a video of mine, and that person said this about the video. Um, he said, "Just stumbled on your channel. Great reaction to Frank Turek's words. I personally would be interested in hearing you go deeper into the difference between sin and abomination, etc. I think it is that is something that." more people need to know or hear and understand. Many non-Christians, especially gender confused, think that since God made them, that he made them gay, and that they are meant to continue living in sin, versus fighting to temptation. Great. Thank you for your comment. Um, I'm going to start by saying this. So, in this video, I'm not going to be talking about, oh, not talking down on them. I'm going to give examples of what they are saying, how you could apply to, I would say, anybody that, they are, that, that is living in sin. But first, we need to define what sin is. So what is sin? Version chapter 3, verse 4, but I would you guys to read the whole chapter. The Bible says, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. But the question is, what law? Now, most Christians are going to tell you what? It is God's law. But is it God's law? Yes and no. That's why I say it is partially true. It is partially true. Why? The verse didn't say it is the transgression of God's law. It simply, said it, is, it simply said it is the transgression of the law, which means we are not going to assume it is only God's law. So basically, it will be any law that would be in accordance with God's law. What does that mean? Well, this basically means that um, if you break the laws that govern the land, and they are in accordance with God's law or God's morality, you also sin. For example, speed limit law. So, we like to, we all drive in the highway on the road and there's a speed limit. The reason why I take a speed limit because that's the easiest example that I can think of right off the bat, as of a law that is in accordance with God's law. What is the, what is, why is the speed limit there? It is there to protect us from danger accident and other things which is good so if the speed limit says to do 75 and you're doing 90 then you sin right because it is not against god's morality because it's there for us to protect ourselves however if the law like i said next the last sentence if the law that govern the land is contrary to god's law of liberty then we need to apply Acts chapter 5, verse 19. What does it say? It says that we ought to obey God rather than men. Now, are there laws that govern the land that can be contradictory to God's law? Yes. Let's say God says, I want you to preach the word to all the world. And then the world is saying, um, if you preach the word, we're going to kill you. So you better not preach the word. Are you going to obey God's law or the law that says not to preach the word? If you choose to, to do what the man said, that is not to preach the word, because that law is against God's law, 
then you have to obey God's law. Because if you don't obey God's law, in God's eyes, you sin. Even if you are abiding by the law of the land, because that law of the land is against God's law, then and you choose the law of the land, that means you sin. Now, that is out of the way. Let's go to the next one. Why are we talking about sin? Well, the reason is because we are all brought into sin, meaning because our parents sinned, we are naturally prone to live in sin. Now, I didn't say we are bored with a particular sin, but we are prone or susceptible to a particular sin. What does that mean? That means to the people that say, I was born gay, I was born homosexual, I was born transgender, I was born queer, whatever. I can actually say, you know what? Um, I was born a rapist. I was born a pedophilia. I was born a sex offender. I was born a um, DV. I was a D violator. I was born a um, uh, liar. I was born a thief. I was born a gossiper. I was born a bully, a bully in person. I could use it for anything that I've become because that's I can say, well, since I was little, I've done these things. But is that true though? No, you can see that people, they tend to do something, but instead of fighting against what is bad, they say, you know what? It's so, it's so much harder to actually fight against sin. I'm just going to sin. But no, God didn't create us like that. Yes, we had the tendency to do certain things, but doesn't mean we have to do it. For instance, my dad, his family side, they are all fat. He is skinny. Why? Because in the family, they have a tendency to eat anything bad. What did he say? What did he do? He said, I'm going to eat something that is good. They were fat. He is skinny. So the same way we can also fight against the sinful, lustful flesh. Let's move on. So, um, even though this video is about sin only, but they, um, I'm, 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 I'm going to be making other videos which are going to be about iniquity, and there's also abomination, good abomination, wicked abomination, greater, and to the greatest abomination. Why is that important? It is because all of these things, all of those things, they lead to death. But what 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 the difference is that as you go up the ladder, the ladder of sin, the same way the punishment that you get is bigger and bigger as you get um as you get um higher in the echelon. Okay, that was for that. Now, so let's talk about sin. What is considered a sin? Well, something is considered a sin generally when a person falls into false temptation and then get back gets back up again, because Proverbs twenty four sixteen through eighteen says. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise up again, but the wicked shall fall in by calamity. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles, lest the Lord see it and it displease him, and he turn his wrath from him. Basically, God is saying, don't be happy when people are falling. You know, don't be happy. Don't rejoice because that is a sin. If somebody falls to temptation, even if it's your enemy, if it's your enemy um, going through some rough time and they are actually coming to you for help, and you like and you you have that um, anger against them, and you laugh because they are in a terrible situation, God looks at that as a sin. Because you are laughing at their calamities. Don't do that. Now, next thing is 
whenever we talk about sin, it should occur by mistake rather than willfully. And when I, now, of course, sometimes we're going to be like, we just go into the sin. But when we sin, it should be more of a mistake than, oh, I want to do that bad thing. That's why John says in First John chapter 2, First chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, my little children, these things I write to you that you may not sin. And if, not when, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. So it's if. So sin should be if I sin, not when I choose to sin. It should be a if statement. What is the consequence of sinning? It's death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Why would we why would you why would why would your sins wages be death? Well, Paul says it better. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? So when you are slaves to sin, meaning you are sleeping in sin, showering in sin, eating in sin, drinking in sin, living in sin, guess what? You are a slave to sin. How do we know that we are slaves to sin when we sin? Well, Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 and 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, nor is ill heavy that he cannot heal. But your iniquity have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he would not heal. There are many people that want to be living in sin, and then when the bad things happen, they expect God to save them. God is like, no, when I wanted to save you from your sin, you wanted to stay in your sin. I can't save you in your sin. Basically, I thought, I thought God is saying. Next thing. What is God's appeal for us humans? Isaiah 58 verse 1. Cry aloud, fear not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. So God is like saying, hey, People, listen, I want you to tell my people to stop sinning. What is sin? It is the transgression of the law. Guess what? I break the law too. Yeah. I also break the law. Just like anybody else. Sometimes it's just happens especially the speed limit man but let's keep on moving now why is god calling us to know our sins well here is this in acts chapter 17 verse 30 with the whole chapter bible says truly these times of ignorance god overlooked because god wants us to come god want god want all of us to come to repentance but now commands all everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has, uh, he has ordained. He has given us assurance of this by all raising him from the dead. Also, Peter says, But beloved, do not forget that one thing, that the Lord is the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise and some as some count as slackness but is long suffering toward us not willing and i have not been showing you guys the screen not willing that any should perish 
but that all should come to repentance in verse number chapter chapter two of chapter three of second Peter verses eight to ten. So why is God calling us to know our sins? It's so we can come to repentance because he does not want any of us to perish. Okay. Next thing is this questions and answers. What is sin? Well, sin is the transgression of sin is the transgression of the law. What law? Any law that is not contrary to God's law of liberty. What can I do if I sin? You can run to God and confess your sin. Okay. So I wanted to make this very clear and short as much as possible, not going too deep. But this is just sin. Next, we're going to talk about iniquity. Because I mentioned there is sin, there's iniquity, there's abomination, and so forth. So guys, let me know if you think that was um, hopefully basic knowledge for most people. I wanted to make it as low basic as possible, not too deep, so you can understand what sin is considered in the Bible and what to do if you actually sin. Anyway, guys, again, this is the Open Door TV. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, that like button. Don't forget to click that like button and that's the cover, and that's the cover button. And if you have a question, you can put it down below in the section below. Until then, bye for now.